Hello everyone, welcome back to Astro in Focus. Today, we're going to be talking about Sequence Generator Pro, and this is going to be a quick, easy guide on how to get your telescope, mount, guide camera, and camera talking to Sequence Generator Pro and get it up and running. Let's get started. The first thing we're going to do is set up the user profile. So we'll go up to Tools, User Profile Manager, and we're going to add a profile in. So I'm just going to label this YouTube. And then you're going to click Save. Make sure you highlight it again. And if you're only observing from one location, go ahead and click the Use Profile as default for new sequences. That way, whenever you create a new sequence, it'll automatically pull in this profile. If you're observing from multiple sites, you may not want to do that. So some of this information will go into our FITS header. So we'll put our observer name in, Brian. Site name, I'm just going to put in AIF Observatory. You'll also want to put your site elevation in, 328. For the site latitude and longitude, I'll put a link in the description below to this website. You can go through, scroll in, find your observing site. And if you click on it, it'll give you your latitude and longitude in degrees, minutes, and seconds. So we'll put our latitude in 39, 46, 21. And you'll also have to make sure that you choose if it's north, north or south, east or west. So we have that as north. And then we'll do 81, 52, 49. And in this instance, we'll use west. If you know your site horizon, you can add that in. And if you try to start an imaging sequence and your target is below that, Sequence Generator Pro will give you a warning. Once we have that set up, we'll click Save. Click OK. And now the fun part, adding all of your equipment into Sequence Generator Pro. So we'll go here to Equipment Profile Manager. And the first time you start it up, you'll probably notice that there's three templates already in here. We're going to go ahead and ignore those, and we're going to start a new one. So just like before, we're going to name a profile. We're going to save it to our list. We're going to highlight it. And just like before, if you only have one setup that you typically use, go ahead and click the Use Profile as default. First, we're going to add in our camera. And this will be our imaging camera. In my instance, it's in ASI. So I know that's ASI 1. Next is the cooler. If your camera has a cooler, you can put in what temperature you normally have that set to, as well as the duration that you'd like it to take to reach that cooling. What Sequence Generator Pro allows you to do is minimize the stress on the sensor by cooling it too quickly. Typically, I image at negative 15 degrees Celsius, and I let it take about 10 minutes to cool down to that. The warm-up temperature, it will slowly reduce the power to the cooler over 10 minutes in this case to warm the sensor up. Essentially, what you're trying to do is minimize any thermal shock to the sensor. Other options here, cool down on camera connect, cool down, when, cool down on sequence start just in case it already hasn't started cooling down, and warm up on sequence complete. I don't have a rotator, so I'm going to leave angle set to zero. Even if you don't have a rotator, and if you know the angle that your camera is set to, you can put this in. I've just always left mine at zero. For your image scale, I'll also link this down. Astronomy Tools has a great calculator where you can put in your pixel size, focal length, and it'll give you your pixel scale. I happen to know that mine is 
1.50. Your readout noise, you can pull that from your camera's manufacturer's website. For pixels, this is the sensor size and width and height. You'll plug those numbers in for your camera. On this right side for my ISAC camera, I leave these as default because this is all controlled via the ASCOM driver itself. So now that we have this information in, I'm gonna click save. That way we don't lose anything. We're gonna skip over filters and focusers for today. We're gonna to go to the telescope tab. For telescope, this is where you'll choose your mount. In my case, I'm using a Gemini telescope.net driver for my Lost Mondi. You can click settings to put in any additional settings for your mount. I like to park my telescope when the, when the sequence completes, as well as end tracking. Oh, sorry. Park it when it's complete. I've never used allow electronic controls a telescope. Typically, once I have a, an imaging night set up, I'll let Sequence Generator Pro control it. Meridian Flip. This is where I had a lot of issues when I first started using SGP. So if your mount has limits for when the Meridian Flip is to happen, make sure you have that properly set up. You'll want SGP to call for that Meridian Flip before it hits that limit. So let's go into set so we can at least see what the options look like. If you know that your mount is set to initiate a Meridian Flip, say 10 minutes, 15 minutes past the Meridian, you'll want Sequence Generator Pro to initiate that flip before then. So say your mount is set up for 15 minutes past Meridian. We're gonna put Sequence Generator Pro 13 minutes. That way it initiates that flip before the mount reaches its limit. We're also gonna click wait for Meridian. What this does, if you're taking a four minute sub exposure and a Meridian flip is going to happen in three minutes, we're just gonna have Sequence Generator Pro pause for those three minutes, do a flip, and then return to guiding and imaging. If you'd like, you can also have it pause. And these are settings that you'll have to play with with your mount and how you'd like it to perform. The one thing I would definitely recommend is auto center after Meridian flip. And this is going to be once you have your plate solving set up. It will go through and recenter itself within 50 pixels or 100 pixels, whatever you set to make sure that whenever you are stacking your images, you won't have any issues. The auto flip, the auto meridian flip auto close delay is just the dialogue. And anything in SGP, if you hover over it, it'll give you little tips or little information about what that setting is. So we'll click OK. We're going to leave the sync behavior as is. Mount settling time. If you notice after your flip or a dither, that your images are a little shaky or your first image just isn't coming out right, go ahead and put a small settling time in. It'll give the mount just a little bit of time to compensate for any of the backlash and just finish that moving movement and make sure that it's stopped. Here we're gonna put in our scope focal length. Make sure that you calculate if you're using any reducers. So in this instance, it's 528 millimeters and put your aperture in. I haven't had to adjust the telescope nudge settings, but you may have to with your mount. So we're gonna go through and click save again. We're gonna skip over plate solve. In my next video, we're gonna talk about how to integrate plate solving. For auto guiding, I'm using PHD2. So it has different options here. In this instance, PHD2. We're going to click Settings, and this will be the installation path. So this is the default path that it installs to. You'll have to go ahead and browse to it, 
C colon program files down to PHD2 guiding and then click OK. Make sure you have your profile set up. So for me, I have one named Los Mondi No Darks because when I first set it up, I didn't have any dark frames. But whatever your profile name is, go ahead and click it. You'll want to make sure that PHD2 connects and opens when the sequence starts, you, and it'll use this profile here. When the sequence is done, if you'd like it to disconnect, go ahead and click that as well. For the PHD2 server options, I leave this as default. If you change this setting and this port number in PHD2, you'd need to reflect those changes here. So we're going to click OK. Now dithering. If dithering is something you haven't used before, I'd highly recommend you look into it and use it. What dithering does is after however many frames you tell it, it's going to shift the image over just a little bit. And the next time it's going to shift it over just a little bit. What that does is it helps reduce noise, especially walking noise. I like to use a medium or high dither and I dither every five frames, depending on how long the integration is. I let it settle at the default settings. If you notice that your mount's having hard times after a dither, just like before, go ahead and change this and let it settle for a couple seconds. That way it won't start imaging until the mount has finished any additional movement. Other options, once again, stop auto guider when it's completed. Stop auto guider when waiting for next target. If you're having it set up to image multiple targets, it's good to stop it and let it start it again once it's on the other target. If you're using an autofocuser, go ahead and pause guiding during the autofocus. And any other options that you would like. The other one I typically use is recalibrate auto guider when target changes. A lot of people find this unnecessary and it may cause, it may be a waste of time. Try it out either way and see how your results are. With my old mount, I needed to do this every time. So it's kind of like a, just a habit and I just leave it in. Recalibration only takes maybe four or five minutes. So it's, it's not like you're wasting a lot of time. Typically throughout the night, I'm only imaging one or two targets anyway. So that's the only time this, this is going to trigger. So we're going to click Save again. Now in Other, this is where you'd put it in a flat box rotator, rotator. If you had any observatory controls, such as a rotator for a dome, safety monitors, environment controls such as any weather sensors, rain sensors. We're not going to cover any of this today, but just know that it's here in case you want to jump ahead and add any of this in. So once you're done, we're going to click save. And now you have all of your equipment set up. Once you have these items set up, work through an imaging night. Make sure everything's working properly and then add in the next piece of equipment. Once you have that piece in, build upon it. If you start adding in all your equipment all at once, you may find that you might start having too many errors or too many bugs and you might not be able to track down what the issue is. So I always start with the basics and build upon it. Don't let SGP be overwhelming. Whenever I first started using it, it was, but it's really easy and it's a great tool. Well, that wraps up this video. In future videos, we're gonna talk about some of the more advanced topics that's gonna to make your Astro imaging much easier. We're gonna talk about integrating plate solving into Sequence Generator Pro, as well as various advanced topics. If you like this video, don't forget to click that like button and make sure to subscribe so you don't miss out on any future videos. Clear skies.